Nice. Hey, who's with me? Someone's with me on Facebook Live. Maybe it's myself. I am here on the computer. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a minute. You guys, some of you guys are finishing up with Katie, which I fully appreciate. <sighs> Not bad. So welcome Facebook friends, welcome YouTube friends. It's 11 a.m. on Saturday, so we're about to jump into a class. I just did one of my workouts of the day. I got film for you. If you're not doing those, I do encourage you to check them out. Let's see if I get some more level. This is going to be great. If you're not doing the workouts of the day, I recommend them. It's good, man. I feel, I feel fitter just doing it, man. Upper body, lower body, a little cardio, a little core, and a jujitsu move or two. Every class, lots of reps on one move. You'll be practicing jujitsu. It only takes 10 minutes. You'll be staying fit, getting fit, keeping sharp. So anyway, I do recommend that you guys be doing the workout of the day. At least try one, 10 minutes of your life. Okay. This week we've been talking about the bottom of the mount. Okay, so on, and I'm going to do a little review and I'm going to add a few details today. Okay, specifically on the bottom of the mount. We've been talking about the trap and roll escape. Trap and roll escape is one of the two escapes you'll do for your whole career. I'm still doing two escapes for mount. Okay, there's little details that make them go sort of infinitely deep, of course, with only two moves in a position. You know, and admittedly, there's like sort of other little kind of variants you can do. Uh, but basically, we're if you're not going under with an elbow escape, you're rolling them over with a trap and roll, something like that. So this is going to be an infinitely deep subject for you your whole career. It's definitely worth always checking out any class, any fundamentals class where they're talking about trap and roll in case you can get a new detail, even if it's one that the teacher doesn't know that they're doing. Okay, so thank you for joining me uh, uh, to talk about this and be looking for details you hadn't heard or that you have heard, but for some reason you hear a new way today, okay? Because I do know this is fundamental information um, and that's what we get. Fundamentals for the bottom amount is all you're going to have. All right, now, this week we talked about bridging well, so I want to I want to review that super quickly. A good bridge is going to be mean that your feet are close to your butt, okay? This is review. My feet are further from my butt, I get, you know, less height than if they're close to my butt, okay? So we need to get in, in the practice of getting our toes way underneath, okay? That's going to make bridging good. The other thing that's going to make bridging effective is our elbows. And I really emphasized this this week. Active elbows placed perfectly is what you need from the bottom out. I can't let my elbows be a little bit floppy out to the side. I can't let my elbows be a little bit floppy up in the air. Even if I'm doing a good thing and defending my neck, I have to always be aware that these, these suckers have to hit the ground again when I need them to block the knees because the knees of my opponent coming up in any way, either that way or that way, means that their hips come forward. If their hips come forward, their hips aren't over my hips, and all my bridging, you know, is in vain. Okay. Well, what's up, Rod? Thank you. So, properly placed elbows uh, is super important. You want them in front of the knees. And I say, I like the tip of the elbow on the tip of the knee cap. So you'll be on the kneecap. If you slide off the kneecap to the inside, maybe their legs go outside your arms and you get a little pinned. It's helpful for elbow escapes, not great for your trap and roll. So I like the tips of my elbows on the tips of their knees. And I like to traction the elbow down. That might mean, maybe I can't traction because they're so heavy. So I have to move everything else. If that's the case, move everything else. There's just a little push off your feet. It's one of the ways you probably have the most power on the bottom anyway. So just get your arms traction out. If I have my elbows in the knees, but I'm shrugged like this, I'm weaker. Just this is posturally weaker for my shoulder. And, you know, their hips are now further north. I want the hips as far south as possible so that for sure their hips are over my hips, their butt maybe is running into my legs, that they are so far south. Okay. And then I want to bridge and not like this, but like this. Really scurrying my little feet under my butt for maximum height. The other advantage that I talked about this week for having active and well-placed elbows was that when my elbows are on the ground and I have a little connection to the 
top of their knee. You know, what's at the other end of the bone that I'm in contact with here is their ankle. And if I thought I was going to step over their ankle to trap their foot, um, but, but they're able to have their foot way up here, I'll never reach it. So I have to get their knee and thus their foot down south so that I can trap it. Okay? So you'll trap better if you use active elbows so you can stuff that lower leg in there and now I can go do my trap again. Okay. With that said, having reviewed good bridging and good active perfectly placed elbows, we can talk about just the, the trap and roll basically itself. Basic trap and roll we talked about this week was assuming a person maybe doesn't have their hands on the ground yet, or just to confirm their hands to the floor, I'm going to lift my hips up. Now their hands got heavier and actually harder to sit up. And that means the hand will be there when I go to swim. I think problem number one, especially my kids run into, is I teach them trap and roll and they do this and the person just picks their hand up. And there's no, they're like, I swim, but there's no arm. Okay, well, if you bridge your hips, boom, the hands come down and they'll still be there hopefully when you swim. If one isn't, the other will be. But we're going to just focus on one side. I swim in, I turn my palm down, more crushing power here. So I crush with my upper arm and then I hold the shoulder blade. I don't like jamming my hand between us because when I roll and if they land on my wrist, it's a wrist lock for me, against me, when I was doing the right thing. So swim, crush, trap, trap the foot. You can even jam their lower leg in there if you want. But what I ultimately want is to look over the shoulder and roll. Okay. One more time, trap and roll is going to be hips up. That's a good bridge. So I watch my feet up a little too. Swim, palm down, crash, hold the shoulder blade, trap. I can put that foot in deeper if I want. Now look where you're going and roll. I'm going to do a few of these, assuming that you're getting reps with me, at least mentally. I have my elbows in good position. I walk my feet up so that the hands touch the floor. Swim. Palm down, crush, hold the shoulder blade. Trap the foot, look before I go, bridge. What's this arm doing? I'm sort of hitting them in the other armpit. Their hands are here, this is in their armpit. When I hit their torso with my arm in their armpit, it does sort of help knock them over. So, screw your feet. Big, big bridge here, so their hands come down now. Swim, trap, 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 look and roll. And I'll do one more with you, and then I want to talk a little more about it again. So, feet come in, hips are high, hands touch the ground. Swim, palm down, crush, trap, trap, you might push their leg in here, but ultimately I do want to look and roll. Um, the thing I want to talk about just to reemphasize is a trap and roll is not trap and trap and roll over my shoulder, over my knee, all the way over to here. That's a lot of structural speed bumps that you're running into. Even just my shoulder girdle is a little bit hard to get over if I really am thinking log rolling over straight. That's why you see me doing what I'm doing, which is after I trap and trap, I look where I'm going because now look at the angle of my shoulder. I'm gonna go right over it, no problem, as opposed to this way. Also. The reason I want to look over my shoulder and kind of roll that way and not that way is because which way is my bridge really powerful? Is my bridge really powerful that way? That's kind of weird. That doesn't even feel comfortable for me. My bridge is powerful this way. So that's the way they're probably going to, I'm going to be able to roll them the, with the most power and control. So I trap. Now look where you're going. Now I'm going right with my bridge, right toward you when I knock them over. And I end up at 90 degrees because what happened to the person was with their arm trapped, they got rolled over the corner. So they turn 90 degrees. So it's normal and right that you turn 90 degrees when you're on top. Okay. Many of you have heard me say much of this before. Again, you know, it's funny because I'll have people who say, oh, you know, I went to a seminar and I like heard this thing I've never heard before. They said that, you know, when you trap and roll, you should like look over your shoulder before you go. It changed everything for me. And this will be like, you know, someone that I've taught that detail before. And, you know, it's not offensive because honestly, it is the same for me. You don't hear things and you don't hear it and you don't hear it and then you hear it one day. So this is why there's repetition. 
from your coaches on fundamentals in particular. And this is why you're going to feel, this is why, you know, one day your coach is going to be like, yeah, I told you that before, but anyway, good. Um, so yeah, no offense taken, but that, that happens all the time. Oh, he said it. Maybe it's the way they say it, uh, whatever it is. You know, sometimes you just don't hear something for a while and then suddenly you hear it and it changes everything, even though it was there the whole time. And that's jujitsu, man. It's all, it's all such common sense. And you feel this as you learn it, that one day someone's going to say something that sounds really commonsensical that changes how you do something. But then you think back or maybe never do, but it was there the whole time. Okay. <clears throat> We talked about a couple other hand placements that you can do in the trap and roll. One was, one was if their hands are not next to your head, but they're like a little too high to swim inside and uh, break it down because it's just posted too high. In that case, we go outside. You guys will remember. So I go palm up outside. I reach from the inside with the other hand and grab, gable grip in, crush that down, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep. I'm trying to keep my elbow to my side. I don't like to do this, right? That's a bad space for me. So I go outside, crush down, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep, trap, look, and roll. Okay. Um, I'd like to rep that together five times. So again, even if you're doing it mentally, that's really worthwhile. So, you know, thank you for being here and watching. If you can do it, do it. If you can't do it, be watching. This is still very effective to be picking up new info this way. So I'm outside. Crush, move the hand. That's all this guy. Now, trap the tricep, trap the foot, look, and hold on to this stuff. Actually, you're not going to do this. Hold on to this stuff while you trap and roll. Keep that the whole time. Let's do a few more. Hips up. This isn't doing it. It's just too high. So I go outside, crush, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep, trap, look, and roll. Never letting go of the arm. We'll do a few more. Hips up, hands hit the ground. Outside, palm up. Crush, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep, trap, look, and roll. Last two, hips up, outside hand palm up, crush, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep, trap, look, and roll. You see what a difference that look makes. Hips up, crush, bring the wrist across, hold the tricep, trap, look, and roll. And that's when the hands are just, they're not here, but they're here. They're just out of reach. So I have to go this, crush it down. Okay. And uh, we did talk about the big circle over the head. The big circle is when their hands are not here or here, but way up there. Not here or here, but, and my hip angle makes a difference. Not here or here, but here. See how my hips are in front of my knees? Now their hands are committed to the floor. So you bridging to keep their hands committed to the floor is less important, which allows you to move in a different way. Since I don't have to be doing this when their hands are way up here, I can put my butt down and change the angle of my head. Okay? Their hands are super committed anyway. Their hips are in front of their knees. They're falling and catching themselves with their hands. What you'll see is hips and belly in your face, and it's not, it's not glorious, but what we can do is stop bridging for a moment put my hips down, move my head over here so that I can reach up and find one of those hands. It's two C-grips that I'm going to get on their wrist. I want to dislodge their hand from the floor, which always works best straight up. Straight up. Now draw a circle toward the center and then to my chest. And then I'll trap the tricep. Trap. Look. And roll. So I'm bridging. And they decide, I'm going to put my hands way out of reach so you can't reach them, pal. Okay. Fine. I put my hips down. I offset my head so that I'm able to reach their hand, grab it, dislodge it, which is straight up, up, dislodge, circle center, hold the tricep, trap, now look, and roll. An observation I made this week about this was, yes, I start by off-centering this way, but I end by off-centering this way because I'm going to look before I roll. So we do change sides there. So I go over here, grab the wrist, dislodge, circle center, hold the tricep. Now I'm looking over my shoulder. So you'll have side bent both directions by the time you practice a few of these. Okay. The uh, other trap and roll vari variations that we talked about this week included a sort of a headlock. Somebody's on top of you and they jam their arm underneath your head. And we looked at this detail where that uh, Pedro Sauer does. And I am trying to start incorporating more in my game, which is 
when the hand comes underneath my head, I get uh, my chin to my chest and I keep my head, top of my head to the floor or my nub, the nub in the back of your head. So do this and then push off your feet a little bit. What happens is you'll feel the slack pull out of the skin in the back of your neck and from your shoulders and there's like less space in here, a lot less space. So if somebody's arm was jammed in there, you'd actually be putting weight on their arm, which sort of pins it in place. So that's a very important detail uh, that not everybody knows or does. And it's a Pedro Sauer like kind of special. So chin to your chest and push backwards. Now I'm heavy on the arm. Now just trap the tricep here and they, the arm is stuck. It hits the elbow, hits the floor here. I've got the tricep. They're stuck on a weighted head. And now I can trap and roll. I only need to trap the foot when they sacrifice their own arm by doing this. So that's the beauty of this movement. Someone's arm comes under. I'm going to bring my chin to my chest and push off my feet to take away space underneath my neck. Block the tricep, trap the foot, look, and roll. Um, let's do two more of those together. I can side view for you. Okay. So, hand comes under my head. I do this. Tuck your chin as low as you can. Okay. Pushing off my feet, that's for more weight. You should feel the skin being pulled on the back of your neck. Now just trap that tricep, trap the foot. Look and roll. And last one. Tuck my chin, push off my feet. You should feel the skin getting pulled here. Trap the tricep, trap the foot. Look without picking your head up and roll. Okay. The last one that we talked about this week. Uh, is the upright trap and roll. Sometimes somebody's up here and you start swimming their hands and they're like, whoa, and they just stop putting them down. We talked this week that about how when I'm upright, it's not really the right time to elbow escape. All my weight's on my knees and on my feet, like getting in that space is going to be hard. That's why we bump so that their hands hit the floor because we have trap and roll options and, we, and maybe the leg got lighter and you can get underneath. <clears throat> But sometimes a guy has good balance up here and they're just, they're able to stop you from putting their hands down. You will run into this, especially for people who know you have a trap and roll that's pretty good or whatever. They're, they're going to be afraid to put their hands down and they're going to sit up here. Maybe they're trying to set up chokes so they want, they just want to be upright. Anyway, if that's the case, someone's upright, not putting their hands down. You can't trap and roll that way. Look for the hands. Let's say the hands are something like this, right? My arms are bent, keeping them safe. Bottom person, here are the arms. I'm going to look for a wrist, a cross wrist, and then the elbow, and I'm going to grab it. So I've got a wrist grip and I've got a grip behind the tricep here and here. Now I'm going to attach it either to me and try and trap and roll them, or I'm going to attach it to them. And this is something that not everybody thinks of. If you grab someone's wrist and elbow and you really control the lower arm, which gives you the whole arm, and you attach it to their body while you trap look and roll. You can actually do this to a person who was otherwise hiding their hands. You can push their arm to their body and now when you go to trap roll, you know, they can't catch themselves. It's not enough with the one hand. One hand reaching across will not save the day, especially if you have looked over your shoulder before you go to roll them because you will be unimpeded and their hand will be no impedance. You'll be able to do it. Okay, so on the bottom, let's just do a few. I'm going to do a few with you. No, I can't. They're staying upright. I can't seem to push the knees and get them to fall forward. So what I do is I'm, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to be proactively escaping, which you do not have to do, but if I decide I got to get out of here, you can grab the wrist and elbow, pin it to you or them. I like pinning it to their stomach, actually, because it's, it's I'm very strong this way, pushing a right this way, and they are not very strong. You know, this is not a muscle group. This is not an exercise we do at the gym like from a totally closed position, trying to open this against resistance. So I'm, but this is, this is like bench pressing. We are more powerful than they are when we hold the arm and we do this, okay? And I'm gonna trap, look over my shoulder and roll, always keeping that attached to their body. A couple more times with you. I'm trying to bridge, but they're not putting their hands down. Here are their arms. You know, their arms are gonna be everywhere, but we're gonna, for our imagination today, I'm gonna grab the wrist and elbow on one arm, attach it to their belly, 
trap, look, and roll. Last two, a bridge, nothing, nothing doing. I can't get it. Take the wrist and elbow, control the lower arm to their belly, trap, look, and roll. Last time, I bridge, but they cowboy it. They're rodeo. They, I cannot knock them down. I can't get them to put their hands on the floor. Okay. If I decide it's, it's time, I got to get out of here. Wrist, elbow, attach it to them, trap, look, and roll. Okay, and that's a, that's a bunch of variations we did this week on trap and roll. Uh, so, so a big review today. And uh, we also, of course, have our uh, trap and roll versus punch, which falls in our self-defense category. And um, one more that we did, uh, maybe we did it this week in the workout of the day. And I don't know if I got to it in class, but I want to make sure I cover it. Um, because honestly, you have to show this to the kids in your life and to the you know, smaller ladies in your life. These are people who might actually encounter something like this if there was ever an assault situation, bully situation, sexual assault situation. And that is somebody mounted on top of you, pinning your wrists to the floor. This has happened to anybody with an older sibling, like me. And that is this, they pin your wrists to the floor. So now when you bridge, you just, it feels like it adds weight to your wrists, like you're just more trapped. It's a very uh, scary feeling down here. I remember it, okay? So what I need to do is this. There is an answer to get these wrists off my hands, uh, these hands off my wrists, uh, and to begin my trap and roll escape. And I just think this is one of the best ones you could ever teach, like I said, you know, a kid that you know or a smaller woman that you know so that they don't get caught in this very scary position and feel like they have no and no reply. Okay, so the reply is this. I'm going to use my feet to create a percussive bridge. So it's not just going to be, oh, hey, it's going to be a percussive bridge. Slam my feet on the floor a little bit. At the same time, I'm going to try to elbow myself in the hips. I'm going to try to elbow, just drag my elbows down as quick as I can. I have kids that are eight years old that the combination of these movements, 100%, makes me have to let go to catch myself. Because where was all their weight? On their hands, on me. And any time that you rely entirely with your base on the other person's positioning, if they can change it, they can make you fall. And that's what happens here. Big bridge, and I pull my elbows to my sides. That moves, obviously, my wrists, which moves their points of base. What happens to the top person who was pinning you is when those slide, when your wrists slide down, and my shoulders come in front of my hands, I have to, have to let go to catch myself. Have to. And like I said... Eight-year-old girls do this to me. I cannot keep them pinned to the floor because with a good bridge, if they actually move me, boom, it puts my shoulders in front of my hands. So just again, I'm pinning the wrists. Maybe I'm threatening to spit on their face. You know, whatever bully move I'm doing, right? When they actually get my butt up, you see what that does to my shoulder to, to wrist angle? Boom, a little bit of this. And then when you drag this down, it's done. My wrists are behind my shoulders. I have to let go and catch myself. So again, a good bump, Ooh, that changes my shoulder to wrist angle a little bit and dragging your wrists down does, and I have to let go and I have to put my hands on the floor. What we do when the hands are on the floor depends on how much higher than our head they are. It'll either be a swim or a gable or a side bend and circle center and, and roll, and those are the moves that we reviewed today. But um, uh, please do go share this one. I think it's one of the most important ones. Maybe I'm biased because I had a big sister and she had this like tension for hold me down and maybe that's why I like jujitsu but enough of my therapy thanks for being with me this morning it's Saturday morning I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend I hope that you celebrate my birthday tomorrow with lots of cake and presents for yourself please you take my gift and have a good weekend guys I will see you super soon we'll be back on the mat um, June 20th I'm hoping that's what I'm hoping that's uh, health, health and fitness centers in Connecticut that's the goal date so that's Greg's date See you guys soon. Ending my stream on YouTube. Thanks, guys.